Hey everybody, okay, so I'm back. I'm gonna make the filament choke. I removed the old by filer type. Remember I had two of these in here originally. They were wound by filer and one conductor on one was in parallel with a conductor on the other one to double the opacity, but still by filer. Not uh in parallel, not two windings in parallel on one and then two on the other. So anyway, I'm going to do the same type of choke I did on, or in I should say, the 6 meter amplifier, but I'm going to add more of these ferrite cores. Uh, for 160, I need at least 8. I might put in 9, I'm not sure yet. I think I might just do 9. Just to have a little bit of extra. I have 9, so why not? So I'm going to use 2. Uh, gauge wire here to our gauge. It's double insulated, fine strand, super, super duper flexible. I have the ring terminals here, five sixteenth hole. They'll be connecting to the hundred amp supercon connectors that are already mounted to the panel. I have bypass uh, ceramic disc caps already. Connected. This will uh, be away from the wall. Found out in the other one, the closer it is to the wall, the more capacitance I end up with. So, um, you know, I have the tube interelectrode capacitance, which ends up being a parallel with the cap uh, for the uh, pi input that's closest to the tube, and you know, have this capacitance. So. Uh, this is only working up to uh, 15 meters. I'm not going to bother with 10. So I just want to make sure I don't have too much. If I have too much, then it won't work up there. I'd have to do um, something else, but or just not have it work up there. So um, stay tuned, and I will see you soon. If you'd like to hit the like and subscribe button, then you'll get a notification next time I post a video. So I have some amps on the way. I'm still waiting on a part for the AL811H. I have a AL572 on the way, an AL80A on the way, an AL80B on the way. Uh, and it's holiday time, so it's down a little bit, but I'm very busy for the holiday time. So I love working on amps. If you see one on my channel that you have that needs to be repaired, gone through, very thorough, very fast uh, give me a call but I'm gonna get to work on this I need to strip the wire crimp the connectors I'll use my hydraulic crimpers and uh, use my torch and solder I don't just crimp I crimp and solder and then I'll put some heat shrink over it because I have tons of heat shrink okay so stay tuned this takes time and then I'll put heat shrink over the cores okay so see you guys in a bit Okay, so I ended up using two gauge, two out gauge this time. I used number four last time, which was plenty, and uh, wire length was a lot shorter. Didn't need as many of these cores because the frequency was much higher. So ended up using nine. That gives me it was uh, 225 ohms worth. So that's a little bit more than what's needed for the lowest frequency. It's determined by the cathode impedance of the tube. So this wire was a nightmare to get through. I tried looping them up. It, if anything, it made it worse. But uh, I broke out in a sweat. I mean, it was tough. So I slid one on. I ended up using a pair of vice grips that pull, get them started through, pull one at a time, back, forth, back, forth, and took a lot of time so these are very snug so I crimped the terminals on the end soldered them I need to put it uh, put heat shrink on put heat shrink on the ends uh, just like the other one I'll cut this to length ring terminals again uh, crimp solder heat shrink so I'll show you what I have it's roughly 16.6 uh, micro Henry's I zeroed it out prior so 
I will uh, get back on this and I'll show you it when it's all done and installed. So, 5 16 holes. I'm lucky to have a lot of uh, ring terminals. I happen to have these and I, um, I installed them. So, uh, this is double insulated wire, super high strand. That's why um, I had a hard time fitting it through. If it were single insulated with insulation that wasn't as thick, then they would slip right through. So it's good now, it's snug, but I didn't have any number four left and I didn't want to, you know, I just used what I had. So, but this is, like I said, personal box and um, I will be back. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm back with the completed filament choke assembly. So I'll go over everything I did. I stripped, crimped, soldered the ring terminals, put some heat shrink on them. I folded this up and tightened the, the nuts really tight with a split washer and a washer, all brass, both sides. So heat, put heat shrink on the ferrite pieces. This is really snug. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to put a standoff over here and zip tie it. Keep it away from ground. Took the socket apart. Quarter inch bolt. I have the grade 8 bolt facing down. Plenty of clearance between the head of the bolt and the other side of the filament. There's a plate down here. Let's see here. It's hard to see. So, plenty of clearance over a quarter inch, so I don't have to worry about breakdown voltage between each side of the filament. Crank these really tight. They are super, super tight. Washer, split washer, and nut. Okay, so it's like 0.6 of an inch between the double insulated wire and the chassis. So an amplifier got delivered, I have more coming, so I have to unfortunately put this to the side, but I will get back on it soon. Next thing I'm going to do is install the coil, and then the, the padding caps for 160, and uh, I know someone asked when I did the 6 meter amp, it's roughly uh, 16 microhenries, a little over 16 microhenries, so it's more, a little more than I need to get it down on 160. And I plugged the tube in, uh, I believe it was like roughly 75 picofarads between one side of the socket and the chassis. And I disconnected the ground side of the bypass caps when I took that reading. And that's, that's with the bottom cover overlapping. So this thing will work on 15 meters, no problem. And uh, 10 if I wanted to put it up there. But uh, I don't plan, it, it's not not being designed to work up there. It's going to be a 160 through 15 meter ramp. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Uh, you'll get a notification when when I uh, when I post one. And uh, other videos about this on my channel. So scroll back on my other videos and you'll see the progress of this from when I, I started working on it again. And uh, like I said, this is a personal amp. I'm This really is a personal amp. I'm not selling it. Uh, at some point, I'll, I'll make more, but they'll be in a brand new chassis, like the six meter amp, maybe the next size up, and uh, all new components. Uh, I'm just using what I have around the shop. I have lots of parts here. I'm coming up uh, uh, this come, uh, you know, this January, I'm gonna start putting some stuff online. I just have so much stuff. I want to gain that room back. I have no need for the amount of stuff I have, so I'll be getting rid of some stuff, but uh, it'll be posted online. So thanks again for watching. Once again, ampreparguy.com, 203-892-4119, 73.